3D printing is amazing, but 4D printing adds a whole other dimension. It's usually an industrial process, but today I'm going to show you how I did it at home. All you have to do is add water. My channel largely features 3D printing, which is a hobby I love, and this hobby has become much, much more accessible for people like me over the last decade. But this video is about adding an extra D, 4D printing. I did manage to get an equivalent working at home, but it certainly wasn't easy. Let's start my journey by asking the question, what exactly is 4D printing? It might surprise you to learn that 4D printing is not a new thing. In fact, it goes all the way back to 2012. 4D printing was developed as a collaboration between the MIT self-assembly lab, Stratasys and Autodesk. And perhaps the best way to introduce you to it is to link you to this two minute video from B1M. It explains that 4D printing takes a 3D printed component and modifies its properties over time. In short, this means we can print objects which self-assemble when their temperature or environment changes. The fourth dimension is time. These shapes are prepared using industrial 3D printers and cutting edge materials. And honestly, I find the whole thing mesmerizing. The next question you probably have is why do we need 4D printing? A range of potential applications have been outlined, such as smart valves, which automatically open or close depending on temperature, self-healing objects that when exposed to the right conditions can modify their shape and automatically close up openings. My favorite application is something like aerospace where payload space is severely limited. So an object could be sent flat before self-assembling remotely, perhaps even on another planet. Super cutting edge, but can you do it at home? If we come to the MIT self-assembly lab website, which I've linked in the description, we can find a gallery with more details. There's a range of examples, such as this unfolded cube, which when added to water, will transform itself from a flat 2D net to a 3D shape. Judging by the timescale in the corner, this seems to be quite a slow process, but impressive nonetheless. But for me at home, I thought it was best to try and replicate the simplest example there. Make something that's a straight line, but when its environment changes, such as being dipped into water, can transform into the shape of a cube. I hoped that producing a narrow object meant that I could print parts quickly, and that would make it much more efficient to keep iterating my design after rounds of testing. To make my own self-folding joint, I came up with three concepts. The first I call water absorbing, and I think this is closest to the original design. One portion is made from water absorbing material, so when it's exposed to water, it swells up and folds the joint. Most 3D printer filaments will absorb water, but not to this extent and not this predictable. So the water absorbing concept is out. My next idea was to utilize thermal expansion, where one part of the joint was made from a different material, that when exposed to heat would expand a lot more than the base material, once again, forcing the joint closed. The thermoplastics we can 3D print with at home will expand and contract with temperature, but nothing like to this extent. So that's another concept that's unfortunately not feasible. My final concept and the one I pursued was a dissolvable lock. The part is manufactured, already folded, but with a springy corner. It's then forced into a straight position and then a temporary locking piece is applied to hold it in position. If that lock was water soluble, when submerged, it would dissolve and allow the hinge to restore to its original position. In home 3D printing, we already have water soluble filament designed to be used as support material. When submerged in warm water, it will soften and slowly dissolve, separating cleanly from our model for beautiful overhangs. Simple enough in theory, so let's go with this concept and make it happen. Obviously, this is a compromise compared to the original process, but I did still have some goals in mind. My design criteria was pretty simple. Firstly, I wanted to 3D print everything myself at home, and I wanted to produce all of the parts required in a single multi-material print. I would then pre-assemble the shape to form a straight line, and then have it self-assemble back into a cube when submerged in water. My first idea was to produce the entire cube frame in TPU, because it's flexible yet has memory, restoring to its original position. I used Onshape to mock up a simple design, hollowing out the corners to facilitate easy bending. Stupidly, I got one of the settings wrong for this 3D print, so the retraction was terrible, but even with this, it was a valuable result. Firstly, I learned that TPU was not a good material for these large bridges, and despite the fact that it would bend and return to its original position, 
This task would work a lot better if I could introduce a pre-made kink into the outer arc so I would have more control over how the corners bent. So that was the next modification I made to my design. The idea here was to still use one material with a compliant mechanism. This is where you have thin sections inbuilt that will flex more readily than the rest. Although I was able to get some movement in the joint, as I took it to its full range of motion, the thin plastic snapped, so all PLA was out as well. The most reliable solution therefore would be using multiple materials to make a compliant corner. I split my design into three sections, designing the corner to be TPU and the straight sections to be PLA, but with overhangs to trap the TPU inside permanently. This prototype was printed on the Bamboo Lab X1 carbon, which when using the AMS can accommodate multiple materials. I flexed it off the bed and began testing, finding that my little curve I introduced to the outer corner worked as a spring when pushing against the inner corner and helped the part to spring back to the original 90 degree position. So a combination of stiff and flexible materials was going to be the go for each corner. But there was a big problem because I needed to print the cube in its final shape and I already knew that unless I printed TPU flat on the bed, it was going to be a disaster and probably break. I had a solution that took inspiration from the print in place models on Fab365. These models are printed, split into segments, each of which has good orientation for detail and strength. Connecting these segments are a series of arms and hinges that pull apart once removed from the build plate, move into their final position, and then snap into place. The end result being complicated and detailed models that look great and print without the need for any support material. My idea was to be able to print everything flat on the bed by segmenting the PLA pieces in the middle. I could snap them free, rotate them into the correct position, and then snap them together to lock them into place. Thus letting me print all of the pieces in the best orientation, yet still form the 3D cube frame. Let's have a look inside this print in place design. As you can see, the grey piece doesn't actually touch the blue piece and there's a little bit of clearance the whole way around. Therefore, the grey piece, when snapped free, should be free to rotate 90 degrees before being pushed to the left, the pointy surface breaking through into the left hand cavity and then held in place just like a fish hook. I printed another prototype and found the clearances for rotation were superb, yet the force required to push the two halves together and snap them into their permanent position was way too high. In fact, when I used a mallet for persuasion, one of the sides split in half. If we look back at that sketch, we can see that there was way too much overlap, so I adjusted the dimensions before reprinting. This updated design still had great clearances for rotation, and although it required significant force, I was able to snap the two pieces into their final position. With the proof of concept working, it was time to print an updated model with more segments. I set up an assembly in Onshape, copying groups and then using mates to get them in the correct position. But around this time, I started to get failures using the Bamboo Lab X1. It can print flexible materials fine, but you're not meant to use the AMS to do so. I had successfully done so earlier, but the more complicated prints push things a little too far. So I switched from this to the Sovol SV04, an IDEX machine with both extruders being direct drive. I reprinted the previous mechanism to make sure the tolerances were correct. It turns out everything was a little bit tighter, but that was a good thing because the final mechanism was rock solid. During this project, I found a bit of a shortcut for preparing this complicated multi-material print. It starts with exporting an assembly instead of individual items with all of the pieces as one STL. In your slicer, you can then right click and split the part into individual components which is so much faster than importing them one by one. You can then click on the components that need the material changed and set them to the other hot end and therefore the other material. I found this much faster than bringing in the parts individually. You'll notice at first that I had a lot of stringing for the TPU section of the print. I actually tuned this using Super Slice's inbuilt calibration processes and I'm planning to make a video on that in the future. Despite the TPU springing, the print was entirely functional and I once again used a mallet to lock the rotated segments in their final position. This print was ugly, but it was effective as a proof of concept, as I was able to pull all of the pieces straight, and that meant I could move on to the dissolvable locks. You might have noticed these little bumps on the side of my PLA parts. They were designed to interface with this print-in-place locker. The idea being, after the joint had been straightened, 
These could then rotate down, locking the joint straight until they dissolved. What I discovered, however, is that dissolvable support material filament is as flexible as TPU. I went through several iterations, trying to make this part thicker and thicker so it wouldn't bend, but this was futile. Any time I put the piece into position, a few seconds later, it would start to bend and the straight line would no longer be straight. Although I was pleased with my problem solving so far, at this stage I was genuinely stuck. So I decided to proceed with a temporary solution. And that solution was this inelegant dissolvable sleeve. Its function was simple. Push the joint straight and then slide it from the end to stop the joint from closing. Once it dissolved, the joint would be able to snap back to 90 degrees. It worked, but it did break one of my criteria because they had to be printed separately instead of in the one print. The other design, although not effective, could at least be printed in the correct position, ready to fold down on any 3D printer that could support at least three materials. So temporary, but enough to allow me to proceed testing. I printed the final version of the main assembly on the Sovol, and as you can see, the stringing on the TPU is almost completely gone. I also changed the PLA color to green, so it would stand out better when submerged. I snapped this image mid-print, and you can see that ideal clearance for my print-in-place mechanism. This time when doing the pre-assembly, instead of using the brute force of a mallet, I instead used a vise, which allowed me to guide the rotated pieces into their final positions. Here's my completed eight-sided cube, ready for the addition of dissolvable locks. While these were printing, I prepared a warm bath. I found a spare 3D printer heated bed to help maintain the temperature of the water and threw in some wisps of filament to make sure they would dissolve. Then I switched to a much bigger container, heating up water in the kettle and pouring it in until it reached the top. This raised the water temperature to around 70 degrees Celsius. I then inserted the sleeves into their final position, forcing the cube back into a straight line. This was a clumsy process, but the end result was okay. A GoPro was submerged in the water with a time lapse running, and then finally, the moment of truth. How did it go? Well, let's call this one a learning experience. Firstly, the water was too hot for the GoPro, as it turned itself off just as things were starting to get interesting. Luckily, I did have a second time lapse set up, and it revealed that progress was slow. In the first 20 minutes, it went from a straight line to a gentle curve. At around an hour, it was starting to pull together more, and as three hours approached, the dissolvable filament was clouding up the water. During this test, I noticed the hot 70 degree water was enough to deform the PLA, but the dissolvable filament did do its job, but just took a long time to do so. The sleeves were so thick that it took a long time for them to dissolve. I let the experiment sit overnight, and by this stage, the soluble material had completely dissolved, but the corners of the cube were no longer 90 degrees. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison, and as you can see, it was pretty disappointing. So I needed less dissolvable filament, but I needed it to be at least as strong. It seemed impossible, but then I had a light bulb moment. I was going about it all wrong and expecting a flexible filament to try and be rigid. What I needed to do instead was to use this filament in tension. Here's the final piece and let me show you how it works. The first change is making these holes go the whole way through so the new locking piece can print in place. I printed mine separately and added them after the fact, but if you had access to a reliable 3 material printer, this is how it would look as it came off the machine. Firstly, the PLA segments will be rotated and pressed into position just like before. This gives us the pre-assembled cube shape that we're after. And then each corner is pulled straight before the other end of the dissolvable lock feeds through the hole, locking it in place. This filament might be soft, but it doesn't stretch too much when it's in tension. With all of the ends locked into place, we have our model ready to go. The final tests proved to be an adequate reward for my problem solving and persistence. This time round, I ran a hot bath and let it cool to just over 40 degrees. I threw the test piece into the bath and almost instantly, the dissolvable lock started to do their thing and the corners went back to 90 degrees. This footage is sped up by a factor of four. All up, the whole process took around two minutes. The GoPro footage is my favorite because you can see the reflection of the print on the underside of the surface. The last joint didn't dissolve and fold until right on two minutes, I was worried that it wasn't going to work, and then finally, it went into position with a satisfying snap. Obviously, this was a lot faster than last time, but I experimented with how thin the links were between the two sides of the lock, and as I made them smaller, I was able to accelerate things even further. 
And that's how I got the footage you saw in the intro of the video. This footage is in real time, and that means the whole process is complete in around about 10 seconds. A perfect cube shape and home 4D printing achieved. Essentially, this is just a proof of concept, but I can't wait to read your feedback in the comments and see where this can go. My design will be linked for those of you with multi-material capable printers, so please have a go and post your result to social media. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 4D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.